Welcome back everybody. XL600. Today we'll be doing an oil service change. We'll be changing the oil filter, oil, and I'll show you what it entails having a bike with a dry sump system. Dry sump system, most of the oil is in the frame, a little bit in the engine. The difference there is you get a bit of better ground clearance, the engine is more compact. But there's an additional screen in the front that a lot of people overlook. So first off, we'll start the bike, go around the block, come back, and then start doing the jobs. First drain the oil at the bottom, do the screen in the front, and then we'll do the filter. Don't over tighten these bolts, we'll pick up problems. Let's start with the job, doing the oil change. Drain plug, the engine is located just behind the gear lever and remember to dispose of your oil properly. Let's get that out. Not a lot of oil that will come out here. Give it a few minutes to drain. Important note, if you have access to a new crush washer, aluminium crush washer on the sump bolt, replace it before fastening it again. If yours is still fine, if you think it's all good to go, reuse it. Let's carry on. Okay, I'm tightening it up. Don't over tighten the bolt, you'll break it off or strip it. Worst case scenario. Let's do the front quickly. A lot of times this part is overlooked. Let's quickly have a look at what the condition of the filter is. There's a little screen here. On our previous video we did the clutch plate replacement. So let's quickly have a look and see what this looks like. Right, the oil is drained. Now we need to remove this bolt. It's a number 19 socket. Now I have, before the video, opened it, or not opened it, well, just got it cracked loose. This was very, very taut. That only tells me that I don't think anybody has ever removed this. Well, hopefully it's not going to be full of debris, but we'll see. Now, it's okay, a little bit of gunk, not a lot. This is not bad. All right, now let me quickly get a cleaning solvent. I'll show you how we clean this. Be back just now. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm using a bit of Wins car cleaner to just clean it out properly. Get all the gunk off. Should there be any? I really don't think anybody has cleaned this before. Not by the look of it. Okay, well, that cleaned it up. Happy days. This filter is clean and can be replaced. Just make sure that you clean it properly. Have a look at your o -ring. 
the o-ring needs replacement you should replace it this one still looks good no problems there but really a lot of times this is being overlooked and people just don't clean this little screen here now you know make sure to clean it that one I think I'll leave it to drain. Let's quickly have a look at the oil filter. Do the oil filter part of it. Right for this one we will be loosening up the three bolts. Got my little nifty tool kit here. In the previous video you'll remember the other kit's ratchet packed up. We'll get that resolved. Okay, let's quickly remove this bolt. Right, let's carry on and remove this. You'll see when removing this that you have an oil hole on the side which lines up here. Remember, oil pump from the bottom comes up pushes in and supplies oil feed to your head and I see this cover has been at some stage cracked by somebody I hope this is not going to give us any problems now at the back you have a little spring that pushes your oil filter against the housing let's quickly have that out of, get that out of the way get a new oil filter you can pre-loop the rubber seal and I'll go get a bit of grease which I will use at the back uh, just to hold it there whilst we install the new filter right let's carry on before I reinstall the oil filter well, that's the new one obviously it goes in like this with the rubber outside and that will be on here what I did notice is the spring I don't think is the original spring so I need to measure Let's quickly do this. I need to measure the oil filter as a whole, including the fitting, which comes back at about 59 mm. And I want to have a look at the depth, which is 52. And let's have a look at the spring, it comes back at 16 mm. So with the crush factor, that's no, fine. We will need about 6 mm or so. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to reinstall it with a dab of grease. I just want something to have the spring uh, cling to on the back. All right, that's a dab of grease there. And then when we re replace you need to make sure that it's in line with your oil feed hole uh, supplying oil pressure to the top you can add a bit of grease there as well in the filter just to make sure that this component stays in so let's do that and make sure that everything goes in properly right if this o-ring is faulty you can replace it but what I want to have a look at just check the length 
of the bolts all equal length I'm uh, wondering why they cracked this one on the side I think I'll just put a, a little bit of a spring in there Okay, let me just get that quickly and we'll carry on just now Alright, let's add three spring washers to these bolts The one thing you'll be <coughs> that you'll know is I've checked the depth. The depth is fine. Just I was just worried about why it cracked. And obviously it was over tightened at some stage. Alright, let's quickly close up here and then we carry on. So that concludes the whole service. Make sure you tighten up everything. Take it for a ride, enjoy it. Before we leave, I want to touch on one tip quickly. At 140 k's an hour or so, you'll feel the front weave in your handlebar. Now the remedy for this is a different front mudguard, fender. This guy is very broad and it starts shaking. That's the theory, that's what's been said. So I'll give it a go and we'll change this unit out to a CRF 450 front my god, um, respective of model. I think it's a bit stiffer and we'll give you feedback and I think that will solve our problem on the head shake at high speed. Cool. Until later everybody. Bye bye.